into another Smart ER. So today we're going to look at where to and how to lubricate and grease all the essential parts of your fabric hood on your Smart for 2 Cabriolet. First things first, you're going to need to just retract your, uh, your hood. And if you don't know or you haven't done this before or you think, oh, I have, I have no idea, I mean, just bought this, uh, this car, have a little look on my video that's uh, already in existence showing you how to get the roof fully off. So I'm going to be using some copper grease, not ordinary grease, but you can use ordinary auto grease. And we're going to be paying attention to these channels. This is where the fabric roof slides along back and forth. So I'm using copper grease because it's easier for you to see. Now remove the seat belt and there's a video showing you how to do that as well. It looks a lot easier there than it actually is to do for the first time. Give yourself as much room as you can by sliding both the seats forward. Fight with the other side, the passenger side as well. And uh, there's a bit of a knack to it to get it out but it's, it's really simple once you've done it once or twice. So again give yourself as much room as possible, there's not much room in here as you know. Whoops, no, I can get further forward than that. So if you just slide it all the way back first and then fold it down, you can actually get another sort of four or five inches, which makes a lot of uh, lot of sense. So I've repeated this a few times now for you to have a look at. So this is the actual mechanism, the lifting mechanism itself with all the gears and the cantilevers and all the elements which have got hinges on. So pay a, pay a bit of attention to these. So where they actually articulate, where they do the folding, that's where we're going to be paying attention to the grease. Uh, apologies for this little video. The light is really bright for some reason and it's not even summertime yet here in the UK. So again, here we are on the opposite side with the, uh, the roof going up. So you've got a number of hinges, you've got the motor cogs. Uh, they're all going to need re-greasing as well. So what we'll do next is take some copper grease, well, take some ordinary grease. I'm using copper grease, as I've said. Whoops, I've just sort of missed that. But you'll see where you've got those circular little uh, shapes on the long arms. I'll, I'll explain now, one second. These, those there. So that if you have a look where they are, just dab uh, on, around, and in between the actual flat bit of metal and the circular metal. So where the one... Uh, has gone through the flat plate and into the other edge. You're literally just giving it a little bit of uh, a little bit of lubrication, and if it's in a warm climate, then it'll naturally become a little bit more viscous or able to 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 be more fluid, and it'll get into the cracks a lot easier. But all we're trying to do, I'm not being very careful with it. I'm literally just liberally applying it, a so that you can see it, but b so it can actually get into it. So as so I've said, ordinary grease will do. Um, plenty of around, I can't remember how much this was, it's not a great deal. You can actually use copper grease when you are changing brake pads. Um, it, it's sort of, I think I got this purely for that reason. So when you install new brake pads on the back of the brake pads, not actually on the friction bit, once you apply copper grease, it actually stops the squeaking. Um, it's also good for things like ball joints and track rod ends. It's also good for things like door hinges. Um, it won't do it any harm at all. So again, you just work your way through, and this is the same for both sides. There's no no differences either side. So I'm just going to do the one side for you. But just take your time, make sure you work it well. I'm using just an ordinary detailing brush, uh, which I've got a few. And I'm going to do a really good clean first in some detergent. Now, some people might want to use WD-40. Um, I don't advise that. All my experience in the past, it's okay for short-term remedies, but WD-40, um, I don't know. For me, it became destructive. If I used it on certain things, it lubricated to whatever it was, like a chain, but ultimately it sort of it, it sort of progressed how things broke up. I really didn't get on with it, and I, and I, I only use it maybe for emergencies or just quick repairs. So as you can see now, um, literally just wipe off any excess crease that you can see it'll if you've worked it in with the brush and and again that that is quite key i don't know what that is there i'm gonna have to look at that and come back to that it's a broken bracket um yeah if you work it into all the little nooks and crannies and the crevices 
and it's a warm day like it, it is actually today and it's really bizarre because we've had nothing but rain for weeks and weeks and weeks so i've had the roof down this morning uh, i just nipped into work on my day off just to speak to the lads but um yeah it's really bizarre but uh, I, I thought oh well it did seem to take a, lit, a little bit extra time to um, to retract and it seemed to be a little bit more laboured so I thought well, it's, it's an opportunity to, to get it done now because I always, I don't need any excuse, I'll always put the top down. So there you have it, that's pretty much most of it done now and uh, cleaned up as much as I can but you can make a much better job of it. So I'm just getting the extra bits. I think this is the bit that I missed that I couldn't show you. And this is with the roof retracted. So again, what I would do is I would put the roof up and down and up and down three, four, five times as you're lubricating these joints. Just to aid it to get in there. And if you want to be really, really pernickety about it, um, in between each couple of raising and lowering motions, put some more grease on, wipe it off, just so it gets in between those crevices. In my opinion, anything that will reduce uh, the the chance of something seizing and breaking the motor, motors can be expensive to replace, no matter what it is, whether it's for a window, whether it's for a, an electric mirror, a seat. So I'm going to guess it's the same for a hood. And there's, there's two of these things. So you break one, and I'm going to guess you're going to break the other. So, uh, yeah, I've literally just... Uh, raised it, lowered it, and then got into the other crevices and the nooks and the crannies as I'm raising and lowering, just to work the grease in there. So while uh, I'm just doing this, just be mindful that uh, you don't get it on any of the fabrics if you can, because it will stain, it is grease no different than if you're cooking and you get a bit of splash back from uh, some pork or beef fat or if you're cooking with uh, a deep fat fryer some uh, frying oil so you don't want that really on the finish of the material or on the inside so uh, that's why i'm just paying a little bit more attention and giving it a good old clean sorry if it's uh, if it's a bit long and all i'm doing is just wiping and applying a bit of copper grease i thought it was going to be a bit quicker than this but hey ho so here we go, yeah, just raise and lower it, raise and lower it, just to work the grease into the actual, uh, into the crevices. So next we're going to start to pay attention now to the rail. So again, liberally. Now, the rail itself, I noticed, because I do use this a lot, I mean, again, I don't need much excuse to take the roof off this car. I really do, and I think it makes it so much more fun. And I've had the, the, the fixed head coupes before. But it's so much nicer when you take the roof off. And today it's been so miserable for weeks and weeks and weeks. Just taking the roof off doesn't half make you feel a lot better. So apply, um, apply it quite liberally into the channels. Um, you don't want massive globs in there. Literally just dab the, the grease onto your brush and run it along the channel on the inside. Try not to get any splashes or anything. If you're splashing, you're putting too much on. And just run it in along there. So you've got the, the location hole there at the very front of the vehicle, the top of the A pillar or on the top of the windscreen. Just give that a little bit of attention as well. And there you go, there's a better shot look. So that's how much I've put in there. And then I'll, I'll go behind it then with some uh, with a cloth. But just check the action as you're going across. And I could actually, I could noticeably and I mean noticeably tell the difference between, not necessarily how much more quickly it was, but how much more smooth it was, and I felt there was less strain on the motors. I could hear the motors purposefully working less hard. I'm just waffling now, I'm sure I am. So I, I just do this a couple of times, just work, again, work the grease into the actual... Um, lowering and raising mechanism not just on the hinges but on the guide rails and on the guides themselves that sit attached to the fabric roof just to make sure all the gears are covered all the all the parts and the metal parts are covered as well 
but all that extra copper I'll wipe off uh, when I finish doing this. Nice and smooth. So this is the back rail. So this is the back of the rail. Pay that attention to that as well and make sure that's covered. And now what we're going to do, remember the whole top of this uh, this pillar is a rail going across the that the whole of that rail actually comes out so you can do a proper really good open top feel. Um, just give that a little bit of love as well where the locating pins at the back go in. I've really screwed this up, I am sorry. Um, but you know there's the hole and there's there's the grease on the hole. But that's what you're looking for. And again, there's also a guide, uh, a guide a node, a guide hole there as well for the actual rail. So we want that to have a bit of grease on. So the back as well. And then again, there's the uh, there's the location uh, for the pin on the top rail. So literally along the floor now. Just do the same. Give it a little bit of a uh, little bit of grease to the to the receiving pin. And that sort of spring. And there we go. Into the front of the actual top rail, the locating bar. Put it all back in. And then it just remains to, again, I'd start the engine up because it can use a little bit of battery and these cars are not, not that brilliant on holding their battery power if they're not used a while. So to li literally just take that vehicle through its paces a few times, back and forth, up and down, up and down, and really just make sure that it's running smoothly. And I'm telling you now, it, I could tell you straight away there was a heck of a difference. So um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. I've got five videos lined up that I'm working on editing as we speak. And if the weather's like this tomorrow, I may take the front end of the car off. So um, thanks very much for watching. Thanks very much for subscribing and all your support. And it's cover tea time. Stop.